Okay guys, uh, we're here. We're gonna actually show you the new queuing. This is uh, for a training video. We're gonna show you the new queuing and set it up and I'm gonna go walk around and give you some examples. So we're gonna start off and uh, everybody here, we're gonna start off with the first one, which is the pallet swipe. Pallet swipe, we're just gonna simply take the right hand and the right leg and we're gonna step on over and take the left hand on top like this, shoulder, shoulder. You're gonna take your right hand and you're going to swipe across the pallet from molar to molar, lifting and repeating six times. So let's do it together. One, ha, 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 six. Always do it the same way and unwind yourself. Uh, for those of you guys who did a check beforehand, yeah, you would check and one side usually tighter, they would both be about loose. For me, initially, my sacrum released and my my neck released. Anybody else have the same thing? A little bit of looseness. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. So we're gonna we're gonna do this uh, again, um, but we're gonna start off with totally twisted. So we're gonna tighten our spinal pelvic lock. Bring our belly button into the spine. Pull up the 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 anus, the rectum muscle, and pull in the bladder and pull it all up inside like that. Okay. Now you want to be really tight there as best as you can. You might not be able to hold it at first. Joe T reminded me that yesterday. You can't always hold it, so you're always trying to hold it and let it go. It's always going to be an aware at this point. You're never going to get it perfectly. So pull it in, take our right hand and underneath the armpit with the right leg over, left hand over top. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to turn our head to the left. We're turning our body to the right initially. And then you're going to stick your tongue in your left cheek. We're going to do that for six breaths. So let's put it in there and what I want you to do is find a spot on your cheek that's tight and push into it. It'll be different for each and every one of you. Mine's right, hmm, right there. We did six breaths through the nose, okay? So it's four, hmm, and six. Okay, now what I want you to do is purse your lips like you're, pursing, like you're looking through or drinking through a straw. And, while you're, and you're going to bring air, drawing it into the lungs, like blowing up a balloon. So we're doing three stages. So breathe in, hold it, breathe it again, hold it, breathe it again, hold it, and exhale slowly, letting the air fall out of your mouth. Don't blow it out. Okay, now spinal pelvic lock again. Turn a bit more. Breathe in, again, again. Filling up the lungs and hold it. Exhale slowly. And I want you to wiggle your feet a little bit, wiggle your knees a little bit, wiggle your hips a little bit, wiggle your shoulders. Spinal pelvic lock, turn a bit more, rotate in. Okay, breathing in again. 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 And exhale slowly. Now find a fixed spot over your left shoulder with your eyes. And we're going to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, okay? And it's important that you find a fixed spot because with a fixed spot, you're taking all of the distraction off of the side. You're reducing the amount of input. And if I was a practitioner wanted to help, I would take my arm here, grabbing her elbow. I would walk around tightly like a hug, turning this way, placing my hand on the top and turning back and in and out. Giving the body as many contact points as possible. I may use my leg and touch against it, reassuring her that I've got her balance and I got the way. There it goes. How'd that feel? Feels good that way, huh? Okay, good. So now what we're gonna do is come back to center and we're gonna turn ourselves slowly to the our head to the right and then slowly turn the body to the left. Again, when we're doing this, head to the right first, locking it up, turn the body to the left, tongue in the right cheek. So for me, it's very different on the right side. Right there is my spot. We're gonna do six breaths, and everybody's gonna have a slightly different spot. Okay, perfect. And now breathing in, with lips pierced, and breathe in, again, 
Again, filling up the lungs as much as you can. Hold it. Exhale slowly. Spinal pelvic lock. Turn a bit more. Breathe in. Exhale slowly. Breathe in again. Exhale slowly. Now find a spot with your eyes again. And what you want to do is uh, look at that, breathe in through the nose, up to the mouth. You'll see Jason's modifying it here. He's actually bending down, which is okay to do. And as, he, as he's modifying it, he's just changing the, the maneuver. And I can assist him by putting my hand on the head, putting my hand on the waist to provide stability, and then touching him with my hip, giving him a third point of contact. You can also, you'll also look how the head wants to go sideways, it's natural. So we could straighten up the head a little bit and push the hip in a little bit right here. So that's where the balance point is. And right here, head this way a bit more. Okay, there it goes. So these are all natural things that the body tries to do and when you're ready, everyone. The body, quite often when we do a maneuver, what happens is we start and we go like this and that's how the body looks. And so what we want to do is we want to find that balanced spot by finding balance in the feet and find balance in the shoulders. And we want to imagine a straight line coming down so that the head is like a pole and it's turning and rotating. Now it's never going to be that way, but that's always in our, our line sight. So what we're going to do is we're going to spinal pelvic lock. We're going to then, once it's in tight, pulling in really, really tight, left hand underneath the right armpit and left foot over and right hand over top, grabbing the shoulder. And we're going to turn the, the head to the left, body to the right. And we're going to push our tongue into the left cheek again for six breaths. So this side here tends to unbalance me. Like as soon as I do this, I tend to almost want to fall because it's shifting the balance in zone one, zone two, and zone three. If I'm pushing out here, zone two is pushing out here and out there in zone three. Okay, so breathe in with your lips first. And take a deep breath in. Exhale um, again and again. And exhale. And again, another way to assist is to just take the body, the most important part is to twist, especially if the person's bigger, this is the most important part right here. Another way to assist is to put the hand on the hip and push it back in and twist it back. And you can straighten the head a little bit, right there. Now when you're doing the maneuver, you have, I'm gonna let you go slowly. When you're doing the maneuver, you can't tell if you're crooked or your head's straight or not. So breathe in through your nose. Find that spot, guys. You can't really tell if your head is straight or your hips are over when you're doing it yourself. So you just do your best to try and feel it out. And one of the ways you can do it is by do it looking in a mirror. Because then you'll see that you're off and you can self-correct. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to join you here. So, uh, so now we're at six breaths. Come back to neutral. Turn your head to the right. Turn your body to the left. Now this one's gonna be probably harder for most people. I wanna go like this. I bring my hips out purposely, pushing them out to try and straighten it. Tongue in the right cheek for six breaths. That's good. Wow, that's actually working really good for me today. So breathing in. Again, again, and exhale. Breathe in again. And exhale. You're bringing air into the lungs, blowing it up like a balloon. Again, deep, deep, deep. And one more. Uh, that one really got it good. Now, Breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. If you want to increase it, you can actually slightly bend your knees and your hips may unlock, mine just did. 
and you can get more stretch, more turn. And then I pull in my spinal pelvic lock with a bent knee, and I'm getting more rotation. I'm getting more torsion on the hips. And you can go all the way down, and you can come back up a little bit. It's okay to add modifications to the movements. Okay, good. Now we're there, let's uh, walk around a little bit. How'd you feel there, Jyoti? Good. Thank you. Good. How'd you feel with that little bit of assistance? Yeah, it helps. It does, doesn't it? Yes. It's super powerful because that little bit of uh, added exposure to the body helps the body process and gives it a reference point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, you guys ready for anti-gravity? Mm -hmm. So we're going to change anti-gravity for this. Now the ones that we have, the breathing pattern we have is already out there. We're going to do something different for this one here. So shoulder width, pull your belly button in, and spinal pelvic lock, root lock, or pull your, your glutes and your anus muscle in, and pull up your bladder. Hands together, fingers touching the best you can. If they don't exactly touch on the back, it's okay, but you want to try to keep them there. Behind your neck, and what you do is go as low down on the neck as you can, pulling the skin up. Like you're pulling the skin is a shirt and you're pulling it off. So then what you want to do is look up slowly and then turn your head up slowly and engage your spinal pelvic lot some more and you'll feel some tension in your lower spine. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the three stage breath here um, with the mouth and the nose. We're going to add that in. Okay, so we're going to start. Go ahead. And nose. One, two, three. Exhale. We're just adding a little bit more breath, changing it up. Again. Again. And nose. And exhale. One more time. Again, and exhale. Wow, that was a really big drop. So slowly bringing your chin to chest. And get your elbows down if you can. And this is where you're gonna feel, uh, I want you to actually move your hips around, bring your spinal pelvic lock, and rotate your hips a little bit. Push your hips forward and backwards, and go side to side a little bit. So you can feel what it feels like. Okay, so with your head down, we're gonna, we're gonna do three stage breath, both ways again. So breathe in. And you'll notice you get way more on the shoulders. Exhale, when you do it over like this. So breathe again. You get way more when you go through the nose like this because you got more space in the lungs because we're bending over the top of the lungs are open. And exhale. Okay, so we're going to do something a little different. So we're going to, at this position here, tighten your spinal, spinal pelvic lock. Okay, make sure your feet are nice so you can move them around on the floor. Just make sure your feet are, are solid. Okay, got a good grip there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to breathe in really deep with our mouth. Hold it. Now look up to the right. And we're going to slowly exhale down. Okay, breathe in again. Look up to the left, and exhale down. Now it's really important going up to the right again. The best you can to pull down. Here we go down a little bit more. And exhale down. Okay, a little bit more over like that. Good, now go up, left, and exhale down. Perfect, you'll see, that's perfect. One more time to the right. And exhale down. So to assist, now what we're going to do is make sure you're in your, in your uh, neutral position with your legs. We're going to start to squat, okay? So that, as you start to squat, go a little bit wider there, Jyoti. Good. Start to squat. And stay over the balls of your feet. And then look upward to the camera. Now I put my, my, my hand on the spine. And I bring that, look up to, breathe in and look up to the right. And exhale down. Now just assist a little bit. Up to the left, and I shift it a little bit. And see, by me giving her a reference point, there you go, up to the other side, I've got my, my uh, knee right around the glute area touching, so it gives her a bit more safety, and up to the left, 
And good. Now come to the center. If you can go all the way down to squat, you go to squat here and try and get your knees in between. That's perfect. Again, to assist her, there's a couple ways. One of them is to put my hands on the shoulders and put my legs right in, breathe in. So I got my, my shins right here at her, right at her glutes, and my hand there, and I give a little extra pull to the head right here. Breathe in. Breathe in again. And to the nose. And what I'm doing is kind of almost like a little bit of a stretch, helping the back stretch a bit more and rotating the shoulders a little bit like this. And that's going to give her a really good feel. And another place you can actually apply a little bit is right here on the, on the back. You can push down a little bit, stretching away. Okay, good. Now slowly with the bum up first. Come on, bum up first. And all the way up, slowly coming to the top and looking right to the ceiling. Now that felt a lot different, didn't it? <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to take a little walk here. Whew. That was a good one. Everybody a little high off that one. <laughs> felt a lot different, right Jyoti? Yes. Yeah, how's your uh, neck and your shoulders and your back now? Very free. Free? <laughs> it was kind of locked. Yeah, yeah but it doesn't feel that way now. Light and thick, yeah. Perfect. Jessica, how are you feeling? Good, I feel lighter. Okay, so here's something you could do. You go like this with your hands. Go right to left and move your hands. The body likes rotation and movement. When you do this kind of movement to the hands, what happens is the body calms itself down or you can just go like this as well. The body, if you just try it and you stand there and just turn your hands like this, you'll find that the body actually likes it. You guys try that? So stand here neutral and feel your body, get a good sense of where it is and turn your right hand out and turn your left hand out, right hand out, left hand out. And just do this. Do you guys notice a sense of calming in your glutes and your hips and your feet? So it calms the body because the body likes rotation, okay? So we're gonna go for our next one. You ready? Okay, uh, we're gonna go shoulder width, okay? And shoulder width, you wanna be basically aligned with your shoulder. A lot of times people do this or they do too narrow. You basically wanna be aligned with the outside of your shoulders. And what we wanna do is spinal pelvic lock, pull it in, soften your knees, and then stick your glutes towards the back, folding over, let your hands come down and touch your kneecaps, chest up. Right hand on your left shoulder. Your left hand, again, grab the skin behind the elbow, locking to the elbow. Now this time a little different. I want you to turn your head to the right, pull your body around to the left, locking up position number two, section two, and then squat. Much different. So breathe six times through your mouth. And I have my right knee up a little higher and left knee higher. To modify this, balance your hips. So like you're skiing, so both weight evenly on both hips and pull around a bit more to add increase. Okay, good, come on up. We're gonna show you another modification the next time. You guys can do it if you want. So, feels pretty good. Now, again, we have position number, or area number one, pressure area, area number two. I got a little extra pressure in this area. And area number three. And so what we're doing is we're locking the pressure when we move the joints each way. That's why we're doing it specifically. So spinal pelvic lock, bring it in. Tighten up those glutes, pull up the bladder. And bend the knees slightly. Stick the bum towards the wall and let the hands hang out till the, the fingers touch the kneecap. Left hand on the right shoulder, right hand. Pull behind the skin behind the elbow, lock it up. Now, Again, I want you to feel something. Turn your head to the left and pull. Okay, but don't do anything else. Come back to neutral. Now what I want you to do is to pull and turn your head. So there's a difference, right? You get more tension when you turn your head to the left 
then pull around, then squat. And when you squat, you stick your bum way out like you're skiing. Okay, five and six. Okay, modification one is neutral to the hips, so you're you know, weighted on both sides to hold it. Pull around. Modification number two, if you want, left foot behind the right foot, and down, and breathe. You'll feel this one really go into the rib cage right around here. You'll feel the rib cage open up really sharp around there. And so it's getting out that lower issue, that lower back issue in this area where it gets tight. That was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> Again, spot that out a little bit. Put it on both sides. So the, the modifications can be done in any way. There's anything we're going to go through. Um, even a different modification and the basic modifications and then eventually you're just moving till you find a restriction and you hold it. So we're teaching the form, here's the basic 10 moves, then how to modify it and then we're going to do that one, we're going to do swinger again but we're going to modify it completely different for each one individually, I'll walk you through it. Spinal pelvic lock, okay, um, so you're going to soften the knees, uh, bum to the wall, hands down, right hand up on your left shoulder, pulling the skin behind. Okay, head turned to the right, body turned to the left, squat. Okay, so what we're going to do is right away, left foot behind, get right down there. You could sit down if you wanted, but not most people can't. Okay, now what I want you to do is to rotate your body way around to the left as far as you can. Rotate it way around to the right. Now, standing up, keeping that position. Feel that in your legs. Lift your elbow. And come all the way around. Down. Okay, good. So you'll notice that you feel in different areas. You felt it in different areas, right? So the idea is, again, it's pin a joint. Lock move and then move. Anything you do at this point creates a fascial maneuver. Anything that you do. Because what happens is all the joints want to move at the same time. And when all the joints are moving at the same time and you lock one of them, then everything else has to adapt. It's kind of like an injury. So it's uninjuring yourself. Okay, let's go to the next one, which is pullover. Okay, ready. Uh, that one was a good one. I'm still huffing and puffing from that one. Spinal bubble block. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take our right hand, put it on our left shoulder, right behind and pull your shirt, like, till it stops. Pull it over the shoulder blade. You got it there. Take your left hand, put it on your rib cage, pull slightly forward. Turn your head to the left. Lift your shoulder. Okay, now what I want you to do is to squat, but keeping your body upright. Hold it there, lift a little higher with the shoulder. Pull your shoulder a little bit over to the front. Hold it there. Then slowly go all the way to the right knee with your head way over to the left. Six breaths. Okay, modify this movement. Stand straight like you're skiing and breathe and you'll feel like you're stretching your own rib cage. Okay, now left leg behind the right one. And breathe. Okay. So you'll notice that we modified that too. You guys get a little winded, we can walk around and get a little wind on that one. So you notice that then as we modify it, as we move the body, when you move to the center and you breathe, your breath, you could, could you guys feel your rib cage expanding? And so what you're doing is you're stretching all the fascia around the rib cage. And around the rib cage, you've got your gallbladder, you've got your spleen, 
you've got um, you've got your your bladder, your large intestine, everything's coming all the way up through. So when you when you can get that rib cage in that torque position and breathe, you're like self stretching yourself, and that's a that's a stretch that I've never been able to do before this. So spinal pelvic lock, left hand over top of the right shoulder, pull the skin over top. Take your right hand on the rib cage, pull the skin forward, turn your head to the left, lift your right shoulder as far as you can. Okay, what you're gonna do is just start to squat. Okay, now as you get to this position here, pull your shoulder up a bit more. Okay, good. Now start to pull it forward a little bit. Forward right there, good. Now all the way to the other knee and turn your head back the other way. Head back the other way, there you go. This is the most confusing one. I'm gonna help Jyoti again. She's getting lots of help here today. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm actually literally giving her support, but I'm literally just kind of pulling the skin apart right here in the back. Okay, I'm gonna let you go there. I'm gonna do the same thing for Jessica. Giving her support pulling the skin back and just kind of helping the body breathe a bit more. Come on up now. I feel, <laughs> feels pretty good, right? Okay. So you guys had to walk that off, but I can hold you down there. <clears throat> okay, the, the toughest one to narrate to somebody is the pretzel squat because there's just so many actions happening. But, once you get used to it, you don't have to do it in pieces, okay? So, I'll, I'm going to show you the pretzel, pretzel squat without pieces. Spinal pelvic lock, I'll do it first here, turn the body here. You can actually just step out, turn, and squat. But we, what the piece is, is what allows people to start to build a relationship with the movement and create a habit. So, we're going to do it in pieces. So, belly button in, uh, spinal pelvic lock, pull in tight. We're going to take a right foot teed to the, to the left side and step out about two feet. The reason why I have them put their feet, turn the body to the, to the right, I have them put one hand at the glute and one on the, right on the hips, on the inside of the hip and the outside. So both hands like this on the hips. And the reason I do this is to just get them used to, after they've been doing it a while, they don't really need to, but you want to sway the hip forward and backwards, keeping the knee locked. So it's a little hard to do at first, but just get that movement, okay? So right hand, left hand forward, right hand on the glute, and then what you do is you push the hand into the glute and fall to the left. Put your left hand on the right shoulder, right hand goes behind the back, palm up as high as you can, turn your head backwards, and then squat. Turn your head to the left? Yeah, to the left, backwards, so you're looking behind you, breathe, now the way you can modify this is you can push into the knee. You can push and you can turn a little bit. You can turn your body a little bit. But, and, but one of the ways to do it, the best way is to get, is to get the, the glutes lower than the knees if you can. A little tough at first, but that's okay. Now switch your arms and look forward. And again, you can move side to side a bit slowly if you want to and push into it and rotate a little bit. And by rotating your upper body a little bit, what you'll find as you push into it, rotate a bit more, is you'll start to create different torsion in between the knee joints and the hip joints. That one's got a good one. Everybody a little bit dizzy after that one? So the most constriction because of sitting in the human body is between here and here. That's why this one has that effect where you almost want to pass out because it's opening up the blood flow there for some people the first time. Okay, spinal pelvic lock. Okay, good. Turn your uh, left foot to a T to the right. Step on about two feet. Now, we're not gonna put the hands on the front and back. We're just gonna turn the body. And right hand forward, left hand on glute. Push that glute out. You'll feel that stretch right in your hamstring area and probably down your ankle on the left side. Those are the areas where normally you'd feel it, but if you don't, that's okay too. Left hand on the shoulder, 
Right hand, palm up behind, turn your head backwards, and squat. Get deep on this one. Try to push a little bit just to feel. Push forward into your left side, onto that knee a bit more. And then turn your body, rotate it down a bit more, just to see what it feels like. And come back on the back leg a little bit just to see what it feels like. Just make the movement slow. Okay, we're going to switch hands, looking to the left or forward, and breathe. And again, you just want to find your tight spot. So as you move around, and as you do this over and over again, you're going to develop these spots. Can you go on? keep walking, guys? As you, as you do this over and over again, you're going to develop these spots. It's like anything else where you can kind of get into that squat. You move two inches or one inch either way and everything just unwinds. So you want to constantly be challenging your body. You don't want to do the exact same thing every time. Same basic movement, same principle, but we want to always be challenging the movement in some way. Okay. How are you guys feeling? Good. Yeah, I got like a major... Super buzzed. Yeah, super buzzed. <laughs> Okay, so um, we're gonna add, I'm gonna add a couple new ones for you guys for this is internal practitioners, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend we're skiing. So we're gonna have spinal pelvic lock, okay? Why don't you put your hands backwards like this, okay? Uh, do you squat, bend your knees a little bit, push your bum out, go all the way forward, okay? Now, once you, and stretch your arms back as far as you can. Push them right back up. Okay, what I want to do is, I want you to turn your body to the left, turn your head to the right. As far as you can. If you want, turn your hand, your palms backwards for another experience. Pull them up. Or, okay, come back to center. Turn your body to the left, head to the right. For another experience, put your hands behind you, your back. Grab them behind your back. Turn your body to the right and head to the left. Turn your body to the left, head to the right. Okay, and if you want, try squatting. As you squat, if you can, try and roll onto the balls of your feet. Look up, turn your head left, turn your head right, move your head in a circle, left and move it in a circle, right, and come on up. Whew. That one's going to challenge you a little bit. So what did you notice with that one, Jessica? Um. I can't think right now, I'm like so out of it. Jason? Chest, open, biceps. Yeah, chest, <laughs> biceps, I feel like my chest is out. Yeah. My triceps are pushing back. Also like clavicle area too. Like that. Clavicle's open. Okay, so let's do another modification. Because you're getting all the good stuff here today. So here's <laughs> another one. So this is more of a dancer's move. I think I'm going to move slightly out of the way of this thing. Okay, how am I getting here? For those of you who are last training, you know. <laughs> okay, so what I want you to do is take your right foot, put it behind you, but I want you to put toe down. Can you get that toe down? Okay, and if you can, best you can. If you can't, toe up, it's okay. Take your, your right arm, bring it all the way over to your left shoulder, and your left arm behind you, and turn your head to the right, and then twist. Breathe. And you can vary your breaths again. You do, you do mouth breathing and then upper body breathing. Upper body breathing will have a different, really different feel here. Okay, now whatever, if you can, squat on your left leg and twist more. Uh, 
Perfect. Now I know it's a little hard on the wooden floor with that foot. <laughs> Easier on the grass. Easier on the grass. Yeah. We'll be doing it on the grass soon. Okay, how did that one feel? Whew. Rotation, I feel my right shoulder open. No, my right jaw open, my right hip open. My left one feels a little bit tight now in comparison. Does anybody else have the same thing? Yeah. Okay, let's try that again on the left side. Right hand behind you and twist. All the way to the right and turn your head to the left. Okay, so uh, the next one we're gonna do is uh, called peekaboo. It's the hardest one to conceptualize, I think, just because of the way it's shown. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the concept. Our fascia is not wrapped equally. It twists like this. It twists literally like this. So what we're gonna do is take our hand and we're gonna grab that first twist, which goes all the way around to the head like this. So putting it on the trap right here, and you're just pulling the skin this way so you take your elbow and you pull this way and what do you want to do is you want to turn your head into the elbow so that it's locked so that's one unit so if you move like this you you're, you're moving the head and the elbow then what you're going to do that's creating that's creating rotation here what we're going to do is we're going to take and twist we're going to push this way you can put it on the cheek or put it on the head but the idea is you're you're twisting the skin this way so let's do that put the hand here i like to put it right on the head i tell people to put it on the cheek but i like the head better like the right over the eye okay and so i'm twisting so twist first so you pull your right one forward and push your left one back once you twist then you're going to go down and turn to your left And give it time and you're constantly twisting the skin and the fascia on the head try and look way back up to the over your knee to the back perfect so the, where, where it gets confusing is you're twisting the skin so imagine you're twisting the skin and all the head ones are like that because the head's got a lot of bones, nine cranial bones. The fascia and the muscles are very, very thin on there. So we're having to create a twist and rotation. That one feels really good on my neck. And most people have a trapezius that's higher on the left, most people, and lower on the right. And that's because our bodies are not even. The fascia wraps in three strands like this around the body, just like DNA. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to do the antler pose. And it's very similar in the idea, but the other one engaged the neck. This one's just engaging the, the hand and the head. So it's the palm of the hand right on the temple, right there. And the right hand's facing back, left hand, palm facing forward. And you squeeze your head, give it a good squeeze, then turn. So you turn. And the reason why you grab it is to lock it. So you grab it and then what you do is turn your head all the way to the left and keep your hips neutral. And you'll feel that stretch coming right up the right side for the most part. So uh, even here you'll start to feel that the head is not even, like the tension on the head is not even. Okay, come back to center. Now we want to go down. Kind of like we're in uh, anti-gravity. Turn your head to the right. And I feel a lot of stretch in my right shoulder, right trap. Turn the head to the left. And to add a little bit, anytime we add the hips, let's squat and go right. And let's go left. And come on up. Let's walk around a little bit. So for me, instantaneously, I feel looser in my quads and my glutes. So it feels like my hips are moving better. Does anybody else have the same experience? Yeah. It's because all three areas of the body are involved in walking, the head region, the trunk, and the legs, and they all work together. These are pressure sensitive areas. 
And if there's too much pressure on one side of your head, you're gonna have pressure over here and pressure over here to match. And that's when you feel unbalanced when you're walking. We're all walking faster. <laughs> Everybody's walking faster, okay. So the next one, you're, you're pushing in, you're mostly twisting and leveraging it, opening, and we're gonna do the same thing forward both ways, and then open and close your jaw. Then you go up, down, left, right, squat, Anybody's ears get bigger there? My ears stretch way out. I already got big ears, so. Okay, so uh, guys, here's the next one. I'm gonna, uh, Jay, you wanna show them uh, behind me and I'm gonna show you for the camera. We're really gonna un unlock our jaws here. This one's gonna hurt the first couple times you do this. It is going to be painful. So I'm gonna show you, take your finger and you're gonna pump into the, up the teeth line, right to the back of the jaw until you can't push anymore, right there. Other one, same thing. I guess. Has everybody got it? Okay, right to the back. Yeah, so here. Okay, now you're gonna open your jaw slowly, it's gonna hurt. Look up. Ah! <laughs> okay, you'll get used to that one. But that's one here. Feel your neck. Woo!